The next two parent functions on our list are some root functions. So I've got the square root function and the cube root function. Now for both of these, I gave you a table of values on the homework prep for section 1-6, which I hope you've completed. But I'm going to spend a little bit more time on these. I haven't put the table of values up on the board already because I wanted to talk through a little bit about my strategy for creating the table of values. I said with the past two examples that usually, unless I have a good reason for doing otherwise, I like to plug in a couple of negatives, zero, and a couple of positives. Well, here I have a good reason for not doing that because I can't plug in a negative number. So I'm definitely going to want to plug in zero because that's the smallest that x could be, and the square root of zero is just zero. So I can go ahead and plot that point. The origin is going to be on this graph. But then I'm only going to plug in positive numbers here because I can't take the square root of a negative. So I'll plug in 1, and the square root of 1 is just 1, so I can plot the point 1, 1. Now for a lot of functions, the next number that I'd plug in would be 2. But I don't want to evaluate the square root of 2 because that doesn't work out nicely. So I'm going to strategize a little bit. The next number I'm going to plug in will be 4. That's because 4 is the next number that's a perfect square of an integer. So that its square root is really nice. The square root of 4 is just 2. So I can say, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. That gives me this point over here. <laughs> and then I'm not going to go to 5, or 6, or 7, or 8, or 9. I like. 9 is just 3 squared, so the square root of 9 is 3. Now I'm sort of running out of space here, that point would be way over here. But I can see if I connect the dots, I've got something that's going up and to the right, but it's getting less steep as we go. Because when I went over 1 here, we went up just 1. We didn't go up to 2 until we got all the way over to 4. We're not going to be at 3 until we're all the way over at 9. So each time I go up one, I'm going over a little bit more, and so it's getting less steep as we go. So the square root function looks something like this. It's actually a little, it's really steep right in there. I adjust. Okay, excellent. Now for the cube root function, since that's an odd root, I can take odd roots of negative numbers. So I am going to go with my pattern of doing a couple of negatives, and then zero, and then a couple of positives. But again, I want to make sure that I'm picking things that it's easy to take the cube root of. I'm going to start with zero and the positives, and then I'll fill, go back and fill in a couple of negative choices. Cube root of zero is just zero. So the origin, once again, is going to be on this graph. Now, 1 works out nicely because the cube root of 1 is just 1, so I can plot that point 1, 1. Cube root of 2 is an irrational number. It doesn't work out nicely. The decimal expression of that just goes on forever and ever and ever without repeating a pattern. So I want to go to the next perfect cube, which would actually be 8. 8 is 2 cubed, so the cube root of 8 will be 2. I'm going to need to use a different scale here if I'm going to make this fit. So let's see, if here's 0, 0, I'll use very small tick marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2. So there's 1, 1, there's 8, 2. So this looks somewhat similar to this. It's going up and getting less steep as we go. These choices help me determine what negative numbers to plug in. Because negative 1 is going to have a cube root of negative 1, and negative 8 will have a cube root of negative 2. Because I know that when I cube the opposite of a positive number, I just get the opposite result. So the same principle holds when I'm working with undoing the cubing by taking the cube root. So here, We've got, essentially, it's, it's almost like this is just flipped over and then flipped over again. So instead of going um, up and to the right, becoming less steep, if I think of sort of drawing it backwards, we're going down and left, getting less steep. Okay, excellent. So those are our square root and our cube root functions. 
Um, and then we've got two more to take a look at, which we'll do in the next video.